Stitchy Tube, settle down and watch Stitchy Tube from my new location. Hey, here I am in my new location, the hitching post. And that's, I guess, what I've decided to call my craft room. And I talk about that in a little, a little bit about um, where the name comes from. But this is my new craft room. It's not finished, finished yet. It's mostly finished. It's been a lot of work. Um, especially kind of up and around everything else that I have been doing. I painted the walls, I shampooed carpets, I removed doors from the closet, I painted the inside of the closet, I kind of deep cleaned, I hung everything up. I've been pulling things out of the attic, moving things from all over the house because I've really had craft supplies like under my bed, in my closet, in the kitchen, in the living room. Uh, everywhere so it's just I'm still working on assembling everything kind of all in one place I love it it's great the cats love it it's uh, it's great it's great it's great and one of the things that people notice when they come in is they're like oh it's so quiet in here and it's really kind of amazing like how hush it is it's so hush that I had to like borrow some speakers from my son to hear videos because all of the stuff on the walls has just dampened the sound and I took the doors off of the closet and it just seems like it just everything is just kind of muffled which is nice because it's very quiet now one of the concerns that people had was they were like well you know I'm, am I gonna miss seeing cats in the background so I've got my that's the chair that I'm using right now for stitching and I have it in the middle of the room and it's great because I'm looking at my computer right now so if I'm watching floss tube but that's where I can sit the chair is called the poang and we got it many, many years ago at Ikea and have replaced the cover once. I keep uh, blankets and towels on a lot of things just because cats like to park places and that way I can kind of clean the cat hair off easily and just replace it again. But you'll see plenty of cat action. They really all like to hang out in here. Grumpy especially. I mean, she just is like, oh, this is, this is the place to be. I've got Ruby right here. And I think that's all that's in here right now. But I'm sure others will be along. We may see the door open. The living room is a total disaster because we've moved what was Harrison's out of here. And then his girlfriend is in the process of moving. And she's got a bunch of stuff in our living room. So this is my little <laughs> calm, collected place to be. So welcome. And you'll take a tour later in the video where I'll show you all around the room all the different things. Okay, so let's... Uh, answer questions first. Last time I wasn't able to answer questions because I couldn't find my notebook, but it turned out I think I only found one anyway, but I've got, I've got like five or six questions this time to answer. Uh, Karen, okay, I think it says Karen 525 Stitches said, how do you choose colors for a design? I don't have a degree in art. I didn't really take art beyond grade school, and I don't, I kind of understand color theory, but I don't really use I don't know. I just look at things and I'm like, okay, I need a brown that is more red than that. Or I need a brown that's more green than that. I just kind of know when a color looks like it's going to work. Occasionally I've had it where I get some threads in from a company and I'm like, oh, all these colors actually look really nice together. I wonder what I could do. Hey, Fitz. Are you going to come up? Are you going to come up? Are you going to cause trouble? So um, I don't, how I choose colors. I And then like if I'm doing a reproduction, I try to match it to the front of the sampler so that I can see, you know, like what's going to work best with how it looks on the front. But oop, don't step on that. He's still, he's still young. So choosing colors is not something, I don't know. I don't really have a technique or I don't have tips as far as, you know, you choosing colors. I think it's just one of those things you kind of know it when you see it. And the thing is, if you choose a wrong color and I've had this happen too, you choose a color and you're like, oh, this actually is not, showing up on the fabric or it doesn't look nice with the color that's next to it or whatever then you just pull it out i remember i had a piece one time that i wonder what it was i don't know if it's in here 
But it was a variegated thread, you know, where it was like uh, the face color, the skin color. And it was peach, but it was peach with brown in it. And the way that I stitched the lady's face, this part of her face was brown, so it looked like she had a five o'clock shadow. I can't remember if I left that in or not. I may have left it in because I think stuff like that's funny. She was the bearded lady. Okay, uh, Patchy Pony Stitcher wanted to know what editing software I use for my videos. I work on a Mac and I, it's brand new. I just got it this last fall. I love it. It's really big and it works like a charm. I had been trying to work on my old Mac laptop and I couldn't get the sound to sync up. So I would shoot these hour long videos. And anyway, it's a long complicated thing, but basically my mouth would move and then the words would catch up. And it's just, it was just a, cause it was an older system. So what I use is I'm filming right now in a program called QuickTime Player. And then I edit in a program called iMovie. And iMovie is really easy to use, but it is just for the, I think it's just for the Mac. And the nice thing is, is that if I have a question, a lot of times I can just go on YouTube and say, you know, like, how do you add a subtitle in iMovie? And there'll be somebody that's put up a two minute video that shows you right how to do it. And so it's, it's really nice to lean on the YouTube community just in daily life because you do have things you don't know how to do and someone somewhere has put a video up about it. So that's what I use, QuickTime and iMovie, and they're both very easy to use. There's one of those things, I think anybody who's put a video up on FlossTube or YouTube would say, um, you know, the first time or the second time maybe were tricky, but really once you get the hang of it, it's just the same thing over and over again, and then you just add bells and whistles kind of as you need them. Patty Fletcher had two questions. One was, what does it mean to stitch one over two? And I actually made a um, diagram. So this is what linen looks like. Pretend this is a piece of linen, okay? So these are all the threads going up and down and then side to side. When the first number, when you say like, I'm stitching one over two, the one, the first number means how many strands of floss. So if I say I'm stitching two over two, that means I'm using two strands of floss. So if I say I'm stitching one over two, I'm using one strand of floss. And then the second part, the over part, so over two means uh, how big your stitches are. So if I'm stitching over two threads, I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna go up and skip this middle hole and then go down here. And then I'm gonna come back up here and then go down here. And that's what over two is, because I'm skipping this thread and I'm skipping this thread. So I'm, st I'm stitching over two threads. If I'm doing over one, I would come up here and go down there and then come up here and then go down there. And so that your stitch, it doesn't end up being half as big, it ends up being as quarter a quarter as big. So you could do four of these, one, two, three, four, in the space that you do one regular size cross stitch. Most cross stitching on linen, I would say most cross stitching on linen is done over two threads. Um, over one is done when you want your piece to look really fine and you can do a piece where every stitch is over one. And then a lot of times on these old samplers, like you can see this one with the dove there, that verse is done over one thread. And that way you can get a lot of detail into a smaller space and the words don't end up taking a huge portion of the, of the piece up. Um, that's what it means. And there are a lot of videos. People have asked me to do videos. I have done stitching in hand videos that kind of show the concept, but there are other videos on YouTube about how to stitch over two threads. I don't know if there's, there, there's gotta be something on stitching over one also, but that's what that means. Um, she also wanted to know what is a good place to find seasonal patterns uh, for cross stitch. Anywhere, anywhere you can find, you know, if you have a needle workshop that you like to go to, if you have one of the big, you know, craft chains, if you go to Etsy, if you go to eBay, if you go to online needlework stores, there are lots and lots of places. There are a lot of designers will have on their blog or on their website sections of free patterns and you may find some seasonal things there. I don't know that there's any one place in particular that like is, you know, like the place to find seasonal patterns, but they're just, they're everywhere because people love to stitch seasonally, especially Christmas and Halloween, I find. And now it seems like um, Fourth of July is getting big again too, which I think is cool. Um, okay, Leah Noel wanted to know, how do you document your finishes? I don't. <laughs> I, you know, it's like there's only so many hours in the day. And so I don't, I, I think it's super cool when people have like a, a journal or a log or something and they're like, you know, have got everything all mapped out as far as 
you know, like what they've stitched, what fabric it was on, when they started it, when they finished it, what threads they used, who they gave it to, a picture of it. And there you can buy journals or make a journal of all the pieces you finished. I have not. Shoot. I mean, I could, but I don't. So I don't. I don't, but I think it's really neat when people do. And it's really, it would be a super cool thing to have, you know, your grandma's log of all her projects she did. So I don't do that. Truly Wicked Crafts wanted to know how you fluff whisper. And I had some whisper here to show you somewhere is whisper. Oh, I don't see the whisper. So whisper is a, I'm going to go get some and I'm going to keep talking to you. Whisper is a thread made by the Rainbow Gallery. And I think I have, yes, I do. And it comes in different colors and it used to be used a lot. I don't know if people are using it as much anymore, but it's kind of cool. It's, it's a fuzzy thread. See, it's fuzzy. And it's, let's see, nylon kid mohair. And it says it's hand washable. So it says for cross stitch, needlepoint, beards, and animals. And so it's this fuzzy thread and you stitch with it just like cross stitch, just like regular. You just thread it and stitch with it. But the problem is when you stitch with it, all these fuzzies get tucked into the stitches. So then when you're finished stitching your piece with Whisper, like all done with everything, you can fluff it up, like pull the fibers so that they foof up out of the fabric, kind of 3D-like. And um, there are two ways you can do it. The cheapest way is with a toothbrush, like just to have a cheap, you know, stiff bristled toothbrush and you just kind of brush it, pick at it and, and pull those fibers out. And then they do actually make a little brush called a Bunka brush. And I'm gonna put a picture right here. <laughs> of what a, I think it's a bunka, bunka brush? Bunka brush. And that's a tool that's recommended for, for fluffing your whisper. But really a toothbrush works pretty well too, especially if, if you don't work with a lot of whisper, I don't know if you're really gonna wanna spend however much it is to get a specialty brush just to, to fluff that up, where a toothbrush is really easy. And you know, I mean, if you use your husband's toothbrush, he'll never know <laughs> until he has fuzz stuck in his teeth. That's all my questions for this week. If you have questions, please leave them below. I always answer every comment. I do, I do. And if you answer, ask me a question, I will answer it in the comments, but I'll also take time to answer it on, the, on uh, the videos just because I think it helps other people. I'm gonna be on Fiber Talk, the Fiber Talk podcast on Sunday, the, let's see, what would it be, the 22nd. Um, that is a really cool podcast about needlework, stitching, samplers, all kinds of things. And um, they asked me to be on. I was interviewed uh, like a week and a half ago or so. It was super fun. Um, I just was interviewed by Gary and we talked kind of just about a miscellaneous things like framing and stitching and buttered popcorn and just, it was fun. It was, it was fun to be on it. So I will put a link below to where you can listen to uh, the Fiber Talk podcasts to their channel on YouTube. But you can also, I'll put a link to their website too so you can find them other places as well. But it's really a nice... Fiber talk is cool because sometimes you want to sit and stitch and not feel like you have to keep looking up to see what people are talking about. It's just a podcast. So it's only for listening. You could listen in the car. You could listen, you know, just while you're stitching and, and never have to look up. And, and they do, it's a twice weekly broadcast. Um, they usually do an interview on Sundays and then on Wednesdays they do just kind of a general, like, let's talk about stitching kind of thing. And sometimes they'll have guests and sometimes it's just, you know, just different topics. So it's very cool. Um, I made a note last time to talk about my Dairy Queen job. And I think it was because um, I asked people like what their favorite summer treats were. And I, one of my first jobs was to work at the Dairy Queen in Fargo, North Dakota, which was one, I think it was like at the time, like the third biggest grossing Dairy Queen in the nation or fifth or something. It was very, our Dairy Queen was very clean, very well run. The owner was a really good businessman and he would come work rush with us. But that was such a fun job working with ice cream machines. And um, so I remember when I got the job, one of the things that we had to do was make cones. And so they have the machines and you know, a Dairy Queen cone has a very like swoop, swoop, swirl kind of thing going on. And so they wanted your cones to look perfect. So we actually practiced making cones with nothing in the machine. So you would take a cone, hold it under the machine, 
take the handle, do this, and then make the, you, okay, so here, I'll do the motion for you. You would go whoop, 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 swirl, and then, so you would practice just the motion until you got to where they were like, okay, we think you got it. Now you can actually practice with real ice cream. And so you would practice with real ice cream and you practice making shakes and it was really fun. And, um, you know, we had to weigh the ice cream cones because they wanted you to make them consistently from time to time. What happens sometimes is if you're just like, ah, eh, whatever, this is large, it's large enough. People, if you give somebody a cone that's too large, they're excited that day but then the next time they come in and get an actual large, they feel like they got ripped off because it was bigger last time. And if you give someone a cone that's too small, they're like, hmm, this is, I'm sure we all had that happen where you're like, this is kind of small. So they were very fussy about us making cones exactly the right size. But we used to uh, make the toppings at night. So we had like these big, we'd get these big containers of pineapple in and we would have to mix the simple syrup and there was like this powder that went into it. Um, we gr would grind up peanuts. We would, we made the ice cream sandwiches and we made the Buster Bars and, um, it was just a, it was a really fun job because who doesn't enjoy going to get ice cream? So people that you came usually were either postal workers cause we get, I think we had a discount for like if you were a mailman or a mailwoman and then people just having a treat. So people were super excited. We had like a burger bar where you could stack your burger up with lettuce and tomatoes and stuff. It was a really fun job. Um, they used to have, you know, chocolate soft serve and they don't anymore. And so chocolate, so a chocolate soft serve, um, uh, not Buster Bar, uh, peanut Buster Parfait, so good, so good. And then sometimes we would get like a chocolate sundae, so chocolate ice cream with raspberries on top. But they just don't do the chocolate anymore. And I asked a, a Dairy Queen recently, like, why they don't. And they were like, oh, it's kind of one more machine to clean. And we just uh, didn't, weren't selling a lot of it. And I, don't, I think as a chain, I'm not sure that they do anymore. But I love to swirl ice cream, too. One of my favorite treats was called a freeze, a Mr. Misty freeze. And the Mr. Misty's are like the slushy things. And it was like a whole bunch of squirts of the juice. So it was a real, you know, strong grape and cherry were my favorite. Blue raspberry was good, too. So it was squirts of that, and then some Mr. Misty slush, and then ice cream, and then you would blend it, and it was kind of a creamy slush, like, I don't know. But they still make them freeze, so if you, they're really good. They're really good. Okay, so um, I know why you're all here today. You all want to go on the tour, so we're going to take some time right now to go on the tour, and um, I walked around the room with my phone and I narrate as I go. So here, let's take the tour of the Hitching Post. Welcome to the Hitching Post. This is my new craft room, and we're taking a tour. I'm back as far as I can go in the corner, and I'm gonna take you on a tour and just kind of narrate what we're looking at. This I'm standing like kind of right in the doorway, so this is what you would see if you, if you came in. So um, we're gonna turn this way we'll start here so this is this was a closet this room is not very big it's like maybe 10 by 11 feet and one of the problems that I ran into was that I had this closet but then the doors were like not sliding doors but you know like opening closey doors and so then when you have that kind of door you have to leave room for them to open and it really kind of limits the space you can use so I found that by just removing the doors entirely and then painting the inside of the closet it kind of creates this illusion that the room is that much bigger, right? And so um, I'm really glad that I did that. I think it turned out really cool. The color that I picked for the inside of the closet is just kind of like a russet potato color. And it's a bunch of st my stock and stash in the closet right now. I'm still working on getting it organized. My shipping supplies are in there too. You can see my threads are hanging from the curtain rods on four inch rings. And you can see some of the pieces that I featured in my videos hanging on the walls. But because I have a background in framing and having a needlework store, to me, you just hang pictures all the way up to the ceiling. And I, there's no rhyme or reason as to why things are next to each other. I feel like we're all friends here. So um, I've got things that are really old with things that are really new, things that I stitched next to things that somebody else stitched. And so um, that everybody's kind of up together 
And so there's, that's the closet. Now I'm finding that I'm putting little towels different places because Fitz, like here's Fitz and Ruby, and they both love the craft room and Grumpy loves the craft room and everybody kind of wants to hang out in here now because it's so much fun, isn't that right Fitz? And there I've got a tub of sawdust ready for projects, some packing supplies. I've even got an old uh, window hanging in here and I'm gonna start hanging pictures in the closet too. I have a lot of needlework that is actually on loan still. And so um, I've got a trunk show out and some other things that are out and everything that I have will not fit in here. I tried to only hang stuff that was um, kind of not too seasonal. My seasonal stuff, I'm gonna maybe do a Priscilla and Chelsea and just do displays. Um, so it's mainly samplers and stuff in here and some other pieces. Um, this is kind of a new thing that I started doing at Market, which is just to take old lace and use it as kind of, I don't know, like sampler jewelry. And just it's just kind of strung there. It's not attached at all. And I just think it's a fun way to like enjoy the old lace that I've found online while I wait for a project for it. That clock there is one that I had in my shop, my very first shop. I had bought that at a little boutique. It's not old, um, but it's just kind of cool. That's an antique sampler. I'm not gonna like give too much of a you know, tour of like what every piece is just because it would take forever and, and I'll feature these as I go. This is an antique right above my computer here. This is an old mirror that I got at a thrift store, I think for like $14 and I was going to paint it, but for right now I kind of like it white and the wall color that I chose is called Hitching Post. That's why I'm naming my stitching room the Hitching Post. And um, so a couple people have said, oh, maybe it should be the Stitching Post, but there's a shop called The Stitching Post and I don't want to step on their toes. So I think it's just going to be The Hitching Post because it's like, uh, oh, hey, stop on by The Hitching Post. Things are going to get real stitchy like. And so I attached some. That's a photograph my dad took in Paris and some old buttons. And um, the frame and the mirror is just as I got it. And it's kind of got, I don't know if you can really see it very well, but it's got like old black kind of stains in it. Oops, we got things falling down. That's all right. Um, okay, and then, so the wall is called Hitching Post. It's kind of a cool khaki gray, but sometimes it looks greenish and sometimes it looks reddish. And as the day goes on, it's uh, it changes. It's a nice neutral color to go back behind all these samplers. So I'm really digging it. Um, this is a, I bought this for $9.95, this old clock. Um, it was just the case, the, the clock part was missing. And so I refinished it and put a bird's nest with a little linen bird on the inside and put some um, old scrapbook paper that looks like old sheet music in it, which is kind of cute. So that was kind of a cheap, cheap, fun project. These desks were the original ones that I got when I opened my online store. They were all originally that kind of, um, you know, like light wood color, but the tops over the last 20 years had gotten stained and chipped and you know, just weren't looking so good anymore. And so I got a furniture paint and did a kind of a pre-coat and then another pre-coat and then two coats of paint. And then a cat walked across the top and I painted it one more time. <laughs> so um, it's, I don't, I don't know how well it's going to hold up. I wish I had gotten chalk paint, but I wasn't, I was trying to go like cheapest possible and that's, so that's what I did. I went two, two shades darker than the walls for the top of that. And the thing is, if I don't like it, I can just paint over it again. Down here are a whole bunch of my sampler books, books about antique needlework and samplers and things. Um, those, I showed those blue shaker boxes on my channel one time. Here's some more kind of, you can see me using lace and here's some berries to just kind of dress up things that are on the wall. There's Ann Dale. I need to get the glass replaced on her. She's glassless at the moment, but I thought I'd show her while her glass is not on. This little um, thing that I've got on the wall, I got for $4 at the thrift store a couple of years ago. And originally I was gonna paint it, but I thought, you know what? I kind of like it wooden. And so it's just um, holds kind of tchotchkes and whatnots. And I just got a few spaces left to fill. It had hangers on the back. So that's how it's hanging on the wall. Okay, and then the windows go to the front yard and so let's see if I can back up probably gonna trip over something it's gonna be tricky here because I'm filming into sunlight but you can kind of see there's the uh, 
that $24.99 um, oh what do you call it dresser that I got and here's my mailman coming to pick up my packages so I may have to leave here in a second I'm gonna walk back up to the wall see if we can get better light this is a uh, watermelon basket I got at the thrift store for a couple of bucks a couple of years ago that had been up in the attic and I've got my strawberries for S Ward in there the ones that are left and then this is a little uh, like glass fish bowl or planter that I got for a couple bucks at a thrift store and I use that to hold the free anchor floss that I give out with the tags. That's the Spanish mystery sampler and there's my mailman, hang on. Okay, I'm back. So let's see, I had gone this way. Um, there's one of my first pieces up there at the top, that little scene, kind of needle pointy. And uh, there's some more lace. That's the Anne Harrison reproduction. There's my Teresa Wensler. So here are my um, anchor cabinets from the shop. And so I still have to organize those. I've got whips in there right now, but they're not super organized. And half of them are empty because Jennifer had used them for a while and then I got them back. So that's still in process. I've got a lot of these drawers are starting to get filled up with things but they need to get organized yet too it's kind of been a big job because I had everything spread all over the house and so um, this was something I got at the Lucky Rabbit this little display thing recently and so I've got kind of fun stuff in there this uh, rubber band ball is made with rubber bands from my shop days anytime I would get a rubber band I would add it to the ball Lizzie Kate always used to send rubber bands so I was always like yay rubber bands and uh, here's some of my button packs, and this is some inventory, but it's also just some kind of cute tchotchke type stuff. And so you can see I've still got room up near the ceiling for some things. I've got some big pieces out at the Silver Needle. And um, here we'll zoom up over here. This little uh, bookend here, this bird is really, really cute. I got it at Hobby Lobby, and I didn't realize until I got home that I was supposed to get two. I bought one, so he's lonely. That's okay. And then um, I like to decorate with these uh, drawers from old sewing machines. I've probably got four or five of them. I have in the top drawer here, I use them to organize stuff. Just old sewing machine drawers. I bought those when I moved into my first shop. I think I paid like $4 a piece for them. I don't know what you'd pay for them these days, but... You know, they're kind of just lonely orphans. Um, this is a little fork easel, and I, I sold those at market once. I had somebody on Etsy make me a bunch of them. I don't know if you can do that anymore. And there's lots of prettiness, lots of prettiness. You can see I've still got room and I'm, I'm not averse to hanging stuff all the way down to the floor and all the way up to the ceiling. There's, we're back at the corner again. So let's see if I can, if there's anything else. I'm gonna try not to make you motion sick. Um, I do have a number of these kind of wooden crates that I used to decorate with at my shop. I would make a stack and then do displays. And so I've gotta bring a few of those down from the attic yet. Um, I painted the insides black to make them look more like a set because they were kind of stained and everything. But they, you can see there's a bracket there and I would stack them together and bracket them together so they would stay and they make a really cute display. So I'm going to put those back up. And uh, it's a pretty quilt that a very good friend made for me. And my printer. And then under my desk I've got my garbage can I got at the Lucky Rabbit a few years ago. It's actually an old metal bucket that's all like stained and weathered. And I use that as my garbage can. This is an old rice bucket. I don't know if it's an antique or not, but it's really cool. I haven't put anything in it yet. So that's that's my craft room tour for right now. I hope you enjoyed it. Let you ogle my threads for just a second. Oh, pretty threads. So these are the cottons. And then we've got some stuff. And these are silks. They are so pretty. All right, hope you enjoyed the tour. I really like it. It's super cool. I'm 48 and I had my first child when I was barely 21 and I've never had a craft room before. I mean I've had I had a store so I mean I shouldn't you know wah wah but 
you know, I've always had to kind of like do stuff on the kitchen table and store things here, there, and everywhere. And so with Graham, Graham moved out this summer, and so that freed up a bedroom. And so this is this is the front bedroom. It's got nice windows on the front, so I've got good good light, and it's um it's just really just enjoyable to be in here. So I'm super enjoying it. I've still got work to do, but it's at least put enough put together enough that now I'm packing orders in here and doing work in here and then also stitching in here and watching floss tube and things. All right, it's time for my stash flash. Uh, I haven't made a video for a couple of weeks, but I didn't really get that much. I have not, I'm still not feeling super great and I'm sweaty too because it's hot outside. Um, I'm so tired. I literally could sleep all of the time. 100% of the time is when I could sleep. And when I wake up in the morning, I wish I was still sleeping. <laughs> it's terrible. And I'm achy and I'm taking my vitamin D and, and Monday will be my sixth vitamin D tablet. I take one a week. And really they said four to six weeks is when you should start feeling better. But I've had terrible bone pain and um, just fatigue. And I'm still you know, having trouble losing any weight. I'm drinking a ton of water. I don't know what's going on. I still had ear infections. So I'm on another round of antibiotics. But I was like, Trace, you gotta be an advocate for yourself. Like you don't feel good. Keep going to people until they help you figure out what's going on. So I went to a different doctor. I've been to multiple doctors in the last couple months. And I said, okay, here's the deal. I'm on vitamin D. I went to the endocrinologist. I still feel crappy. She was like, okay, well, so let's check your iron. And we're going to check your electrolytes and check your other vitamins. I said, okay, great. So that was last, that was last Monday. So she, they did the blood test. She gave me a, cord or a steroid shot for my ears and gave me an antibiotic. And so my ears are starting to feel better. But they said, okay, we'll call you back Tuesday. Tuesday, it got to be like 4.45 and I had not heard. So I called and they said, oh yeah, well, the lab stuff didn't really get out on time yesterday. So your results won't be until tomorrow. And then the doctor's not in, but she'll be in on Thursday. And so maybe you'll get your results then. So I was like, okay, that's mine. So Thursday comes and then it's almost done on Thursday. And I call and I say, look, I do I have results? And they said, oh yeah, we'll have somebody call you. So the nurse calls back a little while later and she says, hey, this is the nurse from Hattiesburg Clinic and you know, but uh, we got your lab results and everything's normal. I said, okay, so then what? She goes, well, what do you mean? I said, I still feel really crappy. <laughs> like I'm, I feel terrible. Oh. I said, so what do we do next? Like, what do we check next? She goes, oh, well, I'll have, I'll have to talk to the doctor. I said, okay. So that was Thursday. And then Friday, I didn't hear anything. So Monday, I'm going to call and say, look, I'm not leaving this clinic until someone takes an interest in what's going on with me because I can't function. Where was I going with that? I don't mean to complain. That's just what's going on with me. I'm okay. Like, it's not the worst thing in the world. But I did get a couple of things. Uh, this one's kind of exciting. This is a little sampler that I saw pop up the other day. I only paid $12.95 for it, I think. Okay, so here's what it is. It is kind of like a doily-ish. It's very, very thin fabric. It's, it's, it's probably cotton. I don't know. And I think somebody wrote on it and then stitched over the writing. And if you see there on the bottom, his name was Rob something, and his name is up there in the leaf too, Rob E. So this was a little boy stitched this, and I can't make all of it out yet. Up here at the top, it says G is for Giant Goliath, who was something, something, something. And then there's like um, W is for something, V is for Vine, W is for Watchmen on the Walls of Zion. Um, that's got to be, I don't know what that is. Um, y is for the year of Christ and then there's something that's like sideways and it was stitched on December 25th 1923 or that's at least when he put a date on it it's very like primitive this was him dinging around I, I don't know if he made this as a gift for somebody um, or what the back is actually pretty neat here's the back I, it, and I think he just was using threads that they had because it's like there's like blue and red and green and light blue and orange. I don't know what these two pictures are. 
But it's almost like he just was kind of, like he had an idea and he just was kind of doodling with thread, which I found very charming. Um, it's finished in a, you know, there's, they've got, I don't, I don't know if, the, if, like if he had this and stitched on it or if he stitched on a piece of fabric and then someone did the edging. I kind of feel like he probably stitched on something that was already done, but it's got this pink crocheted edge, which doesn't match at all. I just think it's really, really neat. And the fact that it was a little boy and it was Christmas, I don't know what I'm ever going to do with it, um, but I have it, and it's neat, and it was, you know, about the price of a movie, so, and that probably took him a good part of his Christmas vacation, and it was, so it was from 1923, Christmas of 1923, so that's, that's Rob's work. How neat. I don't have anything done by a boy. I got some threads. There's my whisper. <laughs> There's my whisper. I got some threads from Nina. And uh, I'm going to put a link below to her Etsy store. She's so nice. I, I have most of her threads, and I, I do use them for my own projects and things. But I, had, I went and looked at her most current list and got a bunch that I didn't have. And so I got these, and she ships them from Hungary. And it's not, it's not expensive shipping at all. And um, they're very, very soft. I think one of the cool things is, is she's got some of these skeins where it's a double skein where you get two colors that kind of go together. Let's see if I can find another one. Here's Holly and... Ilex. This was a limited edition set. But it's a double. How cool is that? It's like a double skein. This one is Mist and Jewel, I think. So neat. But if you've never tried her threads before, this one's kind of cool. Ice cream. They're really, they're very, very, very soft. They smell good. They're just, they're really some of my favorite threads. I love them, love them, love them. So now I have a complete set of Nina's threads because I just, and, and it, it was just, it just, I just got whatever it was that I didn't still, didn't still have. Um, ro that's rose tea. It's very pretty. She also dyes uh, yarns and things like that, and they're gorgeous. I don't knit, but if I did, I for sure would treat myself because they're amazing. And then the other thing that I got was an eBay find. Sometimes I go look for books about samplers on eBay, and I found this one called Embroidery Motifs from Dutch Samplers. I hadn't if I had noticed this one before, I forgot about it, but um, I paid $8 for it, which I was like, mmm, buy it now, because this one goes anywhere from $40 to $240 if you find it other places. And it's from like 19, it was a reprint in 84, but it originally came out in 74, I think. And it's full of hand-drawn motifs of, I'm trying not to hold these up too long, of different things and then it's got you know history of Dutch samplers and things like that it's a very very cool book um, and it, it really is chock full it's 200 pages of you know just different designs and things so it's a great little book if you can find it there are a bunch up that are 30 to 40 bucks that you can buy um, I got the one for eight it was like eight eight ninety five so that one I'm adding to my stash so that was my stash flash Okay, what am I all into? I am all into Cat Island cookies. I'm not a big cookie person, which is like makes me feel kind of un-American in a way. I like certain cookies, like for chocolate chip cookies, America's Test Kitchen has a recipe for like a chewy, thick chocolate chip cookie, and I love those. But otherwise, I can really just kind of take or leave a chocolate chip cookie. I just, I'm not a cookie person. Um, there are a few that's like, oh, don't have a cookie. It's fine. Um, these are amazing. And they're from, they're local here. So they're from, is it from Petal? Past Christian. So they're close to here. Catislandcookies.com is where you find them. So, and then they also make some um, crackers and different cookies and things. I've tried the lemon and lime. Here's the great thing about these cookies. They're this big. They come in shapes like turtles and fish and things, which is kind of cool. The lemon cookies are, like when you open it, you're like lemon oil. Like it smells like real lemon, like not fake lemon. And I don't know, like what are their ingredients? Flour, butter, cane sugar, eggs, lemon oil, and sea salt. So, I mean, they're, and it's, so it's got the right amount of salt where you're like, you bite it and it's sweet and it's very lemon, 
natural lemon flavor and then like this little hint of salt that is just perfect and they're like great they're not too crumbly but they're not too soft they have like a tooth you know like you bite them and there's like a kind of a chew to them like a little bit of a they're amazing i can get them at corner market this when i did this um my s ward kit uh I sent along raspberry and blackberry candy, and I'm thinking that in the future, if I do another kit where it comes with a treat, I may contact this company and see if I can send y'all some lemon cookies because they're amazing. They're amazing. So Cat Island Cookies. Pass Christian. I'm all into Sharpies. I, a couple of years ago, I think, bought one of those big packs of Sharpies at Sam's Club, and I just had it, and I use the Sharpies from time to time. And I have this mug that Jennifer bought for me at Disney World of the Cheshire Cat. And so I keep them on my desk. And every time that I have an invoice that I'm sending out to somebody, I write enjoy with my initials and a heart. And I just like blindly grab a Sharpie. And then it's like, ooh, a green one this time. And it's like, <laughs> it's like a dumb little surprise. But it's just, it's like a tiny millisecond of like, ooh, like a present of just picking a different color. So... I, I like Sharpies. I like the way they smell too, and I don't know why that is. Like, I like the smell of Sharpies. I like the smell of gasoline. It reminds me of my grandpa. He used to have a gas truck. Peaches, are you just looking at the people? That's Peaches. Peaches. That's my son's cat. He does not like to be picked up, but he's very, very sweet. He likes to sleep on your face, though. Okay, I'm all into sixes and tens. And... So this has been like the year of change, the year of movement, the summer of cleaning out. And so sometimes you look at a big task and you're like, oh my Lord, this is too much to do. So I will do things like, okay, if there's like a couple loads of laundry that need to be put away, I'll say, I'm going to put away 10 things. And I put away 10 and then I'm like, okay, on to the next thing. And I know that seems weird, but to break things into smaller steps sometimes feels right. So like when I was hanging all these pictures in this room, I had stacks and stacks of frames and I was like, I'm gonna hang up six and then I'm gonna go on to the next task. I guess one of the things I didn't talk about in my video was how I hung my pictures, as long as I'm, as long as I'm on that topic. I, you can see that some of them are kind of a little bit crooked and that they don't like line up. I on purpose don't line things up because I feel like if you make them not lined up on purpose, it looks purposeful, whereas if you try to make everything like centered, you know, an inch and a quarter between everything, it's almost impossible to get it perfect and then it doesn't look right. So mine is just like, hey, everything, I threw everything on the wall and it all looks a little crazy. And then it just kind of gives some uniformity to everything. I don't know if that makes sense. So anyway, I'm into sixes and tens, doing things in sixes and tens. I don't know why. It, I'm into it right now. I'm all into the um, U.S. Postal Service's pickup which was earlier, um, I just had a bad, like, two weeks. I had a bad two weeks. I don't feel good. And we were, everybody's fine, but we had a little car accident this week, and I'm without a car right now. Um, my son, Graham, like I said, moved out, and we, I had bought salmon at Sam's Club because he loves salmon, and he said, one night I'll come over and we'll make salmon. So I was like, you got it. And the, the recipe that we used is Ina Garten's Herb Salmon, and it's amazing. I don't like fish. And I really don't like salmon, but I love this salmon. And you chop up a whole bunch of parsley and green onions and lemon and garlic, and it's so good. And then there's a little white wine. So I said, Graham, I gotta go get parsley and lemons and some wine. Do you wanna run with me to the store? He said, sure. So we went, we were chatting, it was great, we're having a good time, went to Walmart. On the way home, we stopped at the little wine store. All I needed was one quarter of a cup of, of white wine, because I we just don't keep wine around the house. And um, so I wasn't even going to buy a whole bottle. I just needed a little bit of white wine. And they say you really shouldn't use cooking wine. That if, you, if, if you're going to cook with wine, it should be wine that you would drink. If you wouldn't drink it, you shouldn't cook with it. So, so we stopped at this, the wine store to, um, to get some wine. And um, so we pulled in. It was all good. Shut the car off. Graham and I both go to open our doors and as he's opening his door, this lady comes cruising in alongside of us and shoved the door of my car forward, like, and crunched the front of her car. So I was like, oh, Lord. 
So that was really disappointing. I, but, okay, so everybody was okay. And I was, and Graham was like, oh. And I said, don't worry. We're insured. It's all okay. Nobody got hurt. And, you know, he felt terrible. But it's just it's just one of those things. It was like a, if, it, if she had pulled in five seconds later or we had pulled in five seconds earlier, it wouldn't have happened. Like it just was one of those timing things. So anyway, she drove away. I mean, she, we, the, we called the cops because it's going to be several thousand dollars, I think. They're going to have to probably replace my entire door. I'm not sure. But it was not closable. And then it started pouring. And my pants were so wet, like the water had soaked all the way up my legs. And then I tried calling Harrison. And he was away from his phone, so I couldn't get a hold of him. And my husband's out of town. So it was just like, frust it was just frustrating. But I was trying to keep my chin up and it's like, okay, this is okay. Nobody meant for this to happen. It was just an accident. So I don't have a car, but it's okay because we are insured and they will fix it. It didn't total my car and nobody got hurt. So those are the two main things. Um, but anyway, so I, I like had all these orders to pack and I was, I'm like trying to figure out how to get here, there and everywhere. We've got Steve's old Mustang here, but I don't know how to drive a stick. I don't want to learn how to drive a stick. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. So that's just how it is. And then he just got a new car. That's, it's, an old, it's, an, it's an old car, but it's new to us. But he hasn't really, we got it and then he left and he hasn't really driven it yet. And I don't want to drive it and it's kind of small. So it's not big enough to take what I need to take to the post office. So I went online and I found out that th through the postal service, you can, you can request a pickup. And I had known for a while that you could do that. But I thought, oh, you got to probably give them a whole bunch of, you know, advance warning. No, you have until 2 o'clock in the morning, the day that you need them picked up. And then they called me at 8 to say, hey, your carrier isn't going to be able to carry them at the regular time. So she's going to come back at the end of her shift. And she did. And it was great because I can't get out of the house today. And it's amazing. You can order supplies too, like have them deliver packaging and things like that. But that was super handy today since I can't get down to the post office easily, you know, without involving somebody else. So I'm all into USPS to pick up. So that was four things that I'm all into. I guess I didn't come up with the fifth. I had it numbered, but you know what? I guess I'm all into leaving some things blank. That's what I'm all into this week. I didn't do it cheap and cheerful last time, doll darn it. Doll darn it. But I think cheap and cheerful things are important. And so um, this is your assignment for this week and it's to sing. Just sing. My son and I were talking about it. I totally need to get my eyebrows waxed. Maybe I should just shave them off and like go for it, like start a trend. Did you ever see like they had like maybe like the, M the McDonald's brows or something? So singing is awesome. And I think even if you can't sing, you should sing because singing makes you feel happy. And so just sing around the house. When you're doing some housework, put on the radio, put on one of your favorite CDs, put on some Christmas music, who cares? Um, so we're going to, we're going to sing right now, you and I. So if you know these songs, I've got three that I, I just wrote down the first three that came to my mind. A lot of times I sing at home and my kids will be like, why are you thinking of that song? I'm like, I don't know. My mind is just on constant shuffle. It's just any song that I know is in my head and they just pop up. So here's the first one. Ready? Oh, the shark has such teeth, babe. And he keeps them pearly white. Just a jackknife has McKeith, dear, and he keeps it out of sight. You know that song, Mac the Knife? So the funny thing about the song, Mac the Knife, because that was, that was literally the first song that came to mind. And I do sing it from time to time. I sang it, I was a part of a singing group in high school called The Quintessence. And we, that was one of our songs that we sang for some reason. We were like 17 and 18 year old Catholic schoolgirls in uniform and we would go to old folks homes and sing this song about a killer with a knife in his pocket that he would stab people. And we're like, so I, I don't know why we sang that song, but it was, it seemed normal at the time. Okay. Here's a, so this is a, the second song that I thought of, and this is one that used to cause me to come running across the house if I heard it. Sunny days sweeping the clouds away on my way to where the air is sweet. Can you tell me how to get how to get to Sesame Street? 
that song was so happy. <laughs> I don't I don't know if my mom would like turn PBS on, but when we heard the Sesame Street theme song, we would just come running because it's such a happy, cheery song. Okay, and then the third song that came to mind was Michelle. My bell, these are words that go together well. My Michelle, do you know the French part? Michelle, my bell, sont les mots qui vont très bien ensemble. Très bien ensemble, which all that means is that these are words that go together well in French. The funny thing about that song, I'm a, I'm a big Beatles fan, I've seen Paul McCartney a few times, is that before they were big, you know, they just were musicians just trying to pay their bills. And so they would get asked to go play at parties and Paul McCartney would dress like in a black turtleneck and sit with his guitar in the corner and pretend to be French and just play this little song. Like it just, it just kind of funny. And so they ended up making like this little, this little strummy thing that he created. They ended up making a song out of it that was in French. But so I want you to sing this week. And this was a suggestion by somebody on Instagram. And now I don't remember who, but I'm shouting you out. Thanks for the suggestion. You can go to hashtag KSCAC if you want to sing us like however many seconds of a, of a video um, Instagram will let you do. And it doesn't matter if you don't feel like you can sing. Like none of us are award-winning, Grammy-winning singers, but it's fun to sing. And I, I don't, I wonder why we do it as humans. Music for some reason is important to us. I wonder why that is. Okay, let's talk about uh, the drawing from last time. The question was, what is your favorite summertime treat? And it was fun to read all of your summer treat things. I was like, ooh, so many good ones like strawberry shortcake. So many people said watermelon, but there were a lot of just really really good summertime treats and not all of them were you know like candy cookie ice cream things they were a lot of fruits and things too but the person who won the drawing was Emily Crosstitcher and she said her favorite summertime treat is fresh picked mountain huckleberries doesn't that sound great so congratulations Emily please get a hold of me at my email address below and give me your address and I will send you your prizes and we've got a drawing this time too I'm cleaning through all my stuff because I'm moving into my craft room. And so um, this was something I made when I had a booth at the Lucky Rabbit. I'm going to give the glass a little wipey wipe. This is something I made. And it's it's the, the treat this time. And it's a little sampler bird in a magnet frame. So this, this is a, it was a locker frame. I bought a whole bunch of these at Hobby Lobby. And I stitched little things and then sold the little cross stitch piece in the frame. So this is just a little birdie in a frame that you can stick on right on your fridge. And so that's the prize. And then the question this time is, what is your favorite kind of bird? And I think birds are really cool. And I don't know if I could pick a favorite. I think humming, anytime I see a hummingbird, I'm like, I think hummingbirds are really neat. And, um, but I, I guess I like all kinds of birds. When we go to the zoo, it's fun to see the ostriches. And I like big bird. And I just think it would be fun to be able to fly. And, you know, they're all just, they're neat. I even really like turkey vultures. We have a lot of turkey vultures here, which are really big, you know, kind of rough looking birds. But they clean up the, you know, dead animals from the road. And they, they have these giant wingspans. And so you'll see them just kind of soaring through the sky just in these big lazy circles. And it's really kind of just graceful and pretty. So what's your favorite kind of bird? Tell me below, don't say giveaway, don't say drawing or anything like that. Please be 18, please be a subscriber or not. I'm, I'm not gonna check if you subscribe, but if you wanna subscribe, you can. So that's the drawing for next time. Okay, a little bit of zine news. Uh, I'm still working on getting the zine together. Uh, Paulette Stewart from Plum Street Samplers is my first interview. And there are multiple articles and, and projects and things in the zine, but she designed a piece for us so, and I'm stitching it. So it's gonna take me until I can get the model done is when the zine will come out because then I'll, I'll photograph it and everything. I didn't want y'all just to have like the chart with a you know kind of color picture I wanted you to actually see what it looks like it's very very cute it's got a really nice verse on it and it's got an old motif from an old sampler of hers that she hasn't released and so that's very cool but the zine will be coming out soon and it will be available download only on my website and so that's my zine news I also um the s ward sampler 
the, the pashmina came in this week for the second set of 100. 85 people had pre-registered to get, to get the kit. And so I have 15 left. They're on my website right now, kittenstitcher.com, in the um, reproduction samplers area. And the kit comes with the fabric and the pashmina hand-dyed threads from Gloriana. You also get a paper mache strawberry that I made and some candy. And um, like I said, I only have 15 at this time. I think after this 100, this project may go in the vault. And I'm kind of thinking I may do it like a Disney vault where maybe in a year I'll do another 100. But um, it's kind of a lot of work to make 100 paper mache strawberries and kit all these kits because I have other stuff I need to be doing. And um, people are really enjoying it. I've heard a lot of really nice things about the threads and whatnot. And so if you're interested in getting that, this is available, but it's just gonna be real quick like. Okay, so that's the Z news. That's the S Ward news. Um, I wanted to show um, every time just three things from my shop because I've got probably I probably got 500 things on my website now. I'm I'm adding more almost every day. Do I add things to my website? And I'm improving it every time, adding categories. And I try to take really good pictures of things so y'all can see you know what what things look like. But I'm gonna just. I don't want to go on and on and do big videos about, you know, like show every single thing that comes in because you don't want to see that. But I, I do want to highlight things that I think you might think you, you may think are interesting. So one of them is an anchor sampler pack. And I put these together. I hand selected 20, I think it's 20 colors of anchor flosses. And then in the pack, you get a little information about anchor floss and um, the conversion for what's in here to DMC. And I tried to pick colors that were good sampler or primitive colors and just pick a range of things that you might, you know, be able to use in some of your projects. They've been really popular so far. They're only $13.20 for 20 skeins. And I think you might really enjoy trying them. So if you've ever wanted to kind of dip your toe into anchor floss, I've got this now. I have plans for a second set that will be another sampler set of colors with just different colors. And so this one's available now. Um, I don't know how many I have left right now, 20 or 18 or something like that left, but you just can use the search tab on my website and just search for anchor floss. I also am carrying black and white anchor floss that you can just buy in single skeins if you want to try the black and the white, which a lot of people are buying multiple skeins. So that's one thing for my site. Another thing is um, primitive hair. Oh my Lord. She's amazing. And she's got an Etsy shop. She's from Italy, Isabel. And I just love her patterns and her products and things. She has such a great look. And just like really from the get-go, you could just tell anything that was hers. I'm going to show a few of the things that I'm carrying, but this is not everything. Um, I do have a section on my site that's just primitive hair. If you go under the more tab, you'll see primitive hair. This was one of my favorite things at market this last year. And it's just um, elements from a, an antique sampler that she's got, a sampler study. This one you've probably seen a lot of different places, a stitcher sampler. And it's all done in one color. It's got bees and stitching implements. So there's a set of these four animals. Cotton, Miss Harriet Hair Cotton, Miss Lynette Lynn Linen, little kitty. She's cute. Miss Sarah Sue Silk. Oop. <laughs> Miss Mary Margaret Wool. Aren't they cute? So I also got from her these, which are the wooden things that she does the finishing on. And I have, I think, 10 of these left or so. But they're finished on both sides, so you could hang it from somewhere or have it out, and it's decorated on both sides, which is really cool. And they make these, and they're really, really nice. They're kind of grunged up to look old. Um, but I've got these in stock if you like those too for those animals. And you can use them for other projects. This one I love. This is another reproduction, the butterfly. And the original is pictured on the back, and it looks really nice on the dark fabric, but it looks nice on the light fabric too. I love that butterfly. It's so pretty. And then the last one that I was going to show you, and I have others, is the Black Pearl. And this one is her newest pattern. And I think it's really neat. Mermaid on a swing. And um, that's just really cool. She's so talented, and she's so nice. And so definitely check out the primitive hair stuff on my website. Um, this way, you know, especially if you live in the States here, it's easy for you to... She's very good about shipping, so don't ever hesitate to order from her. She's great. But I live in the States here, and you can order for me too if you want. 
And then I got some of these too. She and her, she, her husband makes these and they call him Batman. <laughs> but these are little thread, thread drops that um, little thread palettes with bees and birds. And I think they're so pretty. They smell good, but they make, they make those too. So those, that's printed hair. So that's item number two. And then item number three is I finally got the fabric in to do kits for antique scissors and spools and antique locks and keys. So if you already have the charts, that's okay because you can buy just a kit of the supplies for $13. And it's the hand dyed, picture this plus linen or Ada. So 36 count linen or 18 count Ada and the Belsois silk to stitch each pattern. This one is stitched on doubloon, doubloon 36 count with chocolate Belsois. And this one is stitched on fresco, which is a beautiful color with plush plum, I believe. Belsois. And I have plans for others in the series. You can also get this as a kit with the chart for 20. So if you want the whole kit, it's that you get the chart, the silks, and the hand dyed fabric for 20. Um, this is available also as a download. And I know a bunch of you have downloaded it already, but if you want the supplies for 13 bucks, you can pick it up. Remember that my shipping uh, flat fee in the States is three. I have bumped shipping flat rate for anywhere outside the United States to 12. I'm still losing money on most. <laughs> I lose money almost every time on shipping to whoever, whether you're in the States or out. For sure I do, for sure I do. Um, especially when you take into consideration like the packing supplies and things like that. But I don't, I don't like to milk people on the shipping. It always kind of feels like a bummer when you're like, hmm. And then I, I will mention that that was my three things, but I also am dyeing more fabric this weekend. I've had a really good response to my fabric that I'm dyeing, which looks really primitive. Last week I had a bunch of new colors. I have some of it left, not a lot. It tends to fly out pretty quick. Some of my new colors last week were, um, one of them was called Halfway to Concord, um, which was kind of like, it. and I have a little bit left, I think. I think I have a little bit left. And it's um, kind of a whiny brown, like a wine, wine brown color. And Halfway to Concord, I have this book about American taverns and, um, Halfway to Concord in colonial days was a way to say that you were a little bit drunk. <laughs> like, oh, I'm a little bit on halfway to Concord. And so that's what I named that color. Um, I have another color, co color called Sun Brown. And I was naming it and I was like, what color is this? I don't know. It's Sun Brown. Sun Brown. So that's what I named it. But then I was like, maybe it's like um, Babe the Pig. And it's like, ooh, Sun Pig. Or wait a minute. That, was, that wasn't Babe. That was Charlotte's Web, right? Meaning like, ooh, Sun Pig. Like, he's really good. And then I've got Bethlehem, which is actually named after Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, which is a steel town. I've got Hippie Foot. I've got Tintagel. And Tintagel is an area in the UK where they think, I mean, legend is, that King Arthur um, held his court at this castle. And now the castle is crumbling into the sea. And it's very, like, atmospheric and spooky and cool. So, But anyway, I try to give them interesting names. And the way that I'm doing the colors, because I've had people say, oh, when are you going to have more cookie crumb? I don't know because I dye it. And the tricky thing is with those super light colors, it is a super quick in and out, like literally in and out to get it super light like that. And um, so I want the colors to be consistent. So what I'm doing is I'm matching them to DMC colors. So if I can match it to that original DMC color, I'll call it that, but otherwise I may have something that's really similar that's gonna be just like a little bit one shade darker or one shade lighter or a little bit more green or a little bit more brown. And so what I'm doing is I'm pulling fabrics off as they sell out, just because I don't want people to feel like, mm, I missed out on that. You didn't miss out, I'll have more later, I just don't know when. And I am dying Ada now too, which was really popular. It flew out and I have more Ada um, that I'm ironing this weekend that I dyed and it's great. And so I'm really glad that some of you are having fun um, being able to get Ada. Um, Cause not a lot of places will do the hand dyed Ada. And I, I, I don't have any problem with people stitching on Ada. I think that's great. And it's fun to have grungy, cruddy looking Ada to stitch your primitive stuff on. Okay, that's pretty much all I've got for this week. Um, I am still planning on doing a tutorial on my um, finishing with the uh, sawdust. But I just have had, like I said, a tough couple of weeks. I've been, I've, if I'm awake, I'm working, I promise. But it's, I've just have not really felt very well. So, um, and I've been working on this craft room too. So 
Anyway, um, that's all for today. Thanks for coming around. Thanks for being with me. I wish you all could come over and sit in my craft room with me, but I guess I only... <laughs> I do have, I have a couple chairs. I have a stool, a wood chair, and the poang. And so if you want to stop by and stitch, that would be great. I wish you could. And I hope you have a great week. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys. See ya.